All right. Now we're looking at 10.6. We're still doing trig equations, but these trig equations um, are dealing more with double angles. So we're going to be looking at our double angles equations, our identities whenever we do this. So we have cosine 2x is equal to cosine of x. And these are going to be between 0 to 2 pi again. All right. So here's the deal. Cosine has three options, right? So think about what those three options are. Let's look at our toolbox. I know that cosine 2x is going to equal 2 cosine squared x minus 1 cosine squared x minus sine squared x and lastly 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Now look at what else is in my equation. I have this which is going to be replaced by one of these three. But on this other side, I have cosine by itself. Does it make any sense to in introduce an additional trig function? No, right? So neither one of those actually work out very well for me whenever I'm looking at this problem. I want to use the one that has cosine in it because I have cosine already in my problem. All right, now let's do this thing. So if I replace this, I have 2 cosine squared x minus 1 is equal to that cosine x. So you've got a squared, so you know you're going to get the opportunity to factor. Subtract that cosine. And plus or minus, and it's not the same, so you can't add any like terms. You just have your three terms. Now you factor. So I have two cosine x's and a cosine x minus in the back. I know my signs are different. So I'm going to have a plus one and a minus one because when you check your outsides, so here is a minus two. And when you multiply those insides, that's a positive one. That's going to give you that negative one there. All right. Then split them up. So I actually get cosine x is equal to a negative one half. You see where you subtract the one, divide by two. And cosine x here is equal to a positive one. Now, go back to your unit circle. I'm going between zero and two pi, where cosine is a negative one half. So cosine, my x values are negative over here in quadrants two and three. So cosine is at negative one half up here at two pi over three. I have negative one half square root of three over two, and it's down here also, right? Yeah, so this is negative one half and negative square root of three over two. But frankly, I don't care what the y value is because I'm just focusing on cosine. And then this will be my 4 pi's over 3. So x here is equal to both 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Just, if, just look at that unit circle. What values are you looking for? And that's what you want to do. Where is cosine 1? Where are the x values on my unit circle equal to 1? Yeah. At 0, right? Now, that's where this comes in. I have 0 included, but just up to 2 pi, but not including. That's why my only answer here is 0. All right, so check that interval. I'm up to 2 pi, but I'm not including 2 pi in my solution. All right, I'm just up to 0. I'm at 0 and up to 2 pi. Factor, people, it doesn't go away. Factoring doesn't go away. A lot of you try to solve these factoring problems with the quadratic formula. Quit it. Don't do that. You need to know how to factor. Actual factoring. All right? Good. You can do this. Be efficient in your math. You know how much I love that efficient mathematics. You can do this. Be efficient in your math. All right. Uh, here's the next one. Four 
sine x cosine x is equal to the square root of 3, and we're back to 0 to 2 pi. 0 is a bracket, 2 pi is a parenthesis. Okay, now what does this look like? If I am, um, have a sine multiplied by cosine, and there's no other trig functions around, so I can't combine them and factor it out, what's in my toolbox that looks like this? Yeah, do you see that? I know that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. Those are multiplied together. These are multiplied together. And that's why it's so good to practice those verifying trig identities because then it helps you recall that stuff nice and fast too. And that's important. Okay. So I'm going to break up this 4 to be 2 times 2. This is now my double angle. So 2 sine 2x is equal to the square root of 3. Now, I have this double angle. With, uh, this, so I uh, isolate that. The square root of 3 over 2 is a nice, good, obvious situation that we're looking at. But here's what's going down. All right, because this is a double angle angle all right double angle i know normally i'm going from zero to two pi with my double angle if i multiply everything through by two i'm actually going out to four pi do you see that so when i'm looking at my angle here <clears throat> I'm going to multiply this by 2 for that double angle, and that's how I'm going to go all the way from 0 to 4 pi. So when I'm looking at my unit circle, where is sine the square root of 3 over 2? Well, that's the pi over 3, right? I have uh, 1 half square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Square root of 3 over 2. I don't care if that's negative or not. My whole purpose with all of this is the fact that my sine is positive. So I'm up here in this top part. So I'm at pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. I'm at pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 in the 2 pi realm. So I already have pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. But I need to go all the way out here to four pies, that means I need to take a whole nother round. So this is in from zero to two pi, these are my values. But I'm going out to four pi, which means I need to take a whole nother wrap around. That means I have a coterminal angle with pi over three. So I'm gonna add two pi to that to get that coterminal angle. And with my two pi's over three, I'm gonna add another two pi to that so I can get that angle. Do you see what's happening there? So this, oops, I forgot my two. So this is my double angle. My double angle is going to be these four values because I'm taking it all the way out here to pi over four when I have this double angle. So combine those terms up here and work that out. If I get a common denominator of three, that's six pi over three. And then what I actually have here, my 2x is pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 7 pi's over 3, and 8 pi's over 3. Whenever I look at these coterminal angles to put it in that 4 pi option, right? Okay, now I want to solve for just x. And I want just x to be between 0 and 2 pi. I am restricted there. This is a double angle, but I still don't have x by itself. If I don't have x by itself, I need to divide by 2. When you divide by 2, that's the exact same thing 
as multiplying by one half. Double angle stuff, right? So pay attention to that. If you break this down and you are working in terms of double angle for your actual angle measurement, figure out what's happening at the double angle, then my problem is restricting me between 0 and 2 pi. And I have to get this x by itself. So when you divide everything by 2, I am now left with pi over 6. This 2 and this 2 cancel out, and I have pi over 3. 7 pi's over 6. This 2 takes out that one, giving me a 4, and I have 4 pi's over 3. And these, all four of these values, are between my 2 pi. Now let's think one more time. If I have, think about your transformations. If I'm looking at sine 2x, what does this 2 on the inside represent? Your period, right? So I have this 2 pi, if I were to graph this sine 2x, one period here would be from 0 to pi. And I want to go from 0 to 2 pi. That means I'm hitting technically two full periods. Do you see that? So think about what you know about transformations. That's why we graph these. Think about what that means. So if I want to go all the way from 0 to 2 pi, I'm technically doing two full periods because it's that double angle. Pretty amazing, right? Yeah, it is. Cool. So pay attention to that. If you have this double angle, then do that. I want to do one more because I always get this question asked to me um, out of that 10.6 homework. So I want to do this last problem here real quick. It's 10.6.7, and it is sine 2x equals 2 cosine squared x. So we know my only option available here for my double angle sine is going to be 2 sine cosine. And so I have a cosine on the left and a cosine on the right, so I know I'm going to have some factoring to do, so subtract it and get them together. So 2 sine x cosine x minus 2 cosine squared x equals 0. Factor out, and you can factor out that 2 also because they have a 2 in common, so you might as well do it. 2 cosine x, and that leaves me with sine x minus a cosine x equals 0. Set each one equal to zero. And if I divide both sides by two over here on this left one, I have cosine x equals zero. And I know cosine, when cosine is equal to zero, oh, again, this is, sorry, sorry, same thing, from zero to two pi. When cosine here is equal to zero, I know that, oops, Cosine is equal to zero. So this is the point one zero up here at pi over two. And here's the point um, zero negative one down here at three pi's over two. But look at what's happening over here to the right. I end up with sine x equal cosine x. What I want to know are when are these equal? When is cosine and sine the exact same? Yes. Right? Right here. Positive square root of 2 over 2. And down here when they're both negative. Don't forget about those negatives. That's an easy one to forget about. So I'm digging this at pi over 4 and those 5 pi's over 4. When you're looking at this one, people always get distracted on this one because they're like, what? I can't factor anything out. I have two separate trig functions here. This is 